Welcome everyone. Um, today I will talk about EPIC, uh, which stands for Efficient Private Image Classification and it's uh, joint work with Dragos, Nigel and Frey. And I'm going to uh, present this at the CTRSA conference in a few weeks. So it's all about image classification, which is a um, problem that we see all over the place. It's application scenarios uh, such as autonomous driving, for example, uh, require very good image classification algorithms. But the problem is that in many of these application scenarios, we need to preserve the inputs of the involved parties private. And that's what we are trying to address with EPIC. So one such example is if we have a diagnostic service where you can send um, images of your skin and then you can get a prediction on whether you have skin cancer. Um, there has been research in the plain text domain doing that. But how could we outsource it in a way that the patients and the diagnostic service can preserve the privacy of their input? So if I was about to send an image of my skin, then I would like to know that the uh, image is protected. That's what we indicate with the square brackets and uh, uh, lock. And of course, I would also like the prediction that I received back to be protected. I don't know other people to know my uh, medical conditions. And on the other hand, it can also be that the diagnostic service provider may want to uh, protect their model, the way they perform the prediction, because they make profit out of it. So this is the type of problem that EPIC tries to tackle. Let me give you an overview of our system. Um, EPIC has three main components, building, building blocks, which is a feature extraction based on transfer learning. I will talk about it in a moment. Um, support vector machine classification and multi-party computation. And it can work uh, for, well, in this scenario, the full scenario with four different types of entities, but it can also work with only two of them. So we always need to have an image holder and a classification algorithm provider, and potentially we can also have an analyst, which receives the classification result, and a cloud computing provider. So how does this work? The image holder performs the feature extraction on their images and they uh, securely um, send the, these features to the cloud computing provider. Then the classification algorithm provider trains their support vector machine uh, classifier on plain text data and then they uh, share in a secure way the parameters of the classifier to the cloud computing provider. Then the cloud computing provider performs with uh, multi-party computation techniques that uh, SVM classification on these secret inputs and returns back the classification result potentially to an analyst but it can also be uh, sent back to the image holder directly. So we need at least an image holder and a classification algorithm provider and if these two entities are um, have re limited resources then we can outsource the task of computing to a third party doing the MPC and return back if needed it, by the application scenario the results to a third party which we name here the analyst. So EPIC is a secure efficient and accurate solution to tackle the private image classification problem and one of the ways we gain this efficiency is by offloading as much of the tasks to, uh, to the pu uh, public domain so that we don't have to perform costly operations in the privacy preserving domain and that's exactly the feature extraction phase. So how do we do feature extraction? Uh, there is a technique known in the machine learning community as transfer learning, hence the subtitle of our uh, work, Learning from the Masters. And for our implementation, we've used specifically the uh, Inception V3 uh, model, which is a model from a, a known image classification competition, the ImageNet. 
This is a convolutional neural network, so a much more powerful machine learning algorithm rather than the support vector machines, linear support vector machines that we use later on. But it is trained on images that are not private. There is no privacy requirement here, so this is trained on uh, detecting types of flowers. And the classifier itself is public, so again, there is no privacy concerns. So for our feature extraction, we use the one but last layer of this public classifier. And the result is that we have very strong features extracted from the images without compromising anyone's privacy. The classifier is public, the, it is trained on a completely uh, non-private task such as uh, figure out, uh, figuring out types of flowers and the transfer learning essentially comes from the, from the fact that we can use this knowledge from the generic task to classify images for a completely different target task such as for example indoors images. So it doesn't have to be flowers in the application scenario later on. So this is something that both the image holder has to do on their images before they secretly share these features. And of course, uh, the classification algorithm provider as well before they feed the features to train their SVM classifier. Now the second component is the multi-party computation engine. So with multi-party computation, we can allow mutually distrusting parties to uh, compute a function together without sharing their private inputs. And, uh, well, for our implementation, we used the um, latest version of Scale Mamba, so the Pete's family of protocols. And we performed the timing experiments with two servers, but we will show a demonstration later on with uh, three multi-part computation servers. So, uh, what we gain from this type, what we'll inherit essentially from this type of implementation is active security, which is something that none of the previous works was able, in private classif image classification was able to give us. Um, why is this important? Well, you're outsourcing a task with passive security. You assume that the parties are honest but curious, so they will perform the uh, protocol specification correctly and only try to learn information about your inputs. But with active security, uh, we allow the parties to arbitrarily deviate from the protocol and this is a more reasonable assumption. So the passive security model uh, has a stronger assumption behind it. And at the same time, uh, EPIC works in the dishonest majority setting. So if you trust even only one of the parties that take part in the computation, then the protocol guarantees a correct output and privacy. So if you really want to, in practice, if you really want to have control over the security of this computation, instead of outsourcing the task to a cloud computing service with different servers, you can play the role of one of these servers yourself. So the image holder is one of the multi-party computation servers. And this means that as long as you trust your device to the extent possible, because we all know about side channels and uh, yeah, backdoors, but as long as you can trust your device to perform the protocol correctly, then you are guaranteed a correct output and privacy of your inputs. Now, um, the, uh, the task that the uh, multi-party computation servers perform is the a support vector machine classification, but uh, there are no details that I can discuss about it. So it's straightforward support vector, linear support vector machine classification. Let me now uh, get you through the different steps with an example. So we have a party called Alice, who is the uh, classification algorithm provider, and she has to train the machine learning model first. So she will use this uh, uh, CNN classifier, the one but last layer to extract the features and then she will feed these features to a, a linear support vector machine uh, classifier. This is all happening in the plain text domain. And then she wants to perform with this 
parameters of the linear support vector machine. She wants to perform the um, classification together with two other parties, Bob and Charlie. So she uses an additively secret sharing scheme, shares the parameters of the SVM to the other two parties, and well, since it's additive, if we add together all the um, shares of the parameters, we have the final SVM. Now the second party is Bob, uh, he is the image holder, he has the picture on top, he uh, performs the same type of um, CNN feature extraction, again on the plaintext data I remind you the classifier is public. He gets the features and like Alice before, he secret shares these uh, features in an additive way. And all these parties together want to perform an MPC protocol uh, so as to help, in the end, Charlie to get the final result. So we see this picture over there and we're trying to identify what is this guy in the picture. And they will run all together the private SVM classification and in the end the classification label will be returned to Charlie. So he will get back the result. Flores in this case. Now we also have a short uh, demo of how this solution works with this specific example and one more. So again we have the three parties I mentioned in the previous example. Bob sits at a server called Paris, Alice at Bucharest and Charlie at Novan. And again Bob is the um, image holder, Alice is the uh, SVM holder and Charlie is the answer to get back the result. So let's see how this works. So first they will start up the MPC engine, all the three parties. The different servers. Then Bob will uh, download an image, the image we saw in the previous example. Here it's waiting for an image. The image is downloaded, then we need to extract the features. That's what happens over there with a surf image. and then the image is shared, the feature is shared between the parties and Charlie receives the final result, which is a florist, what we expected to see from the image and then a second example inside a bus where we want to protect the privacy of the kids. The image is downloaded. The features are extracted. And then Charlie gets the correct result again, that this is a picture from inside the bus. Uh, this is uh, uh, performed on the uh, MIT67 uh, um, data set, so we performed experiments with three different data sets. Uh, the SACR10, the MIT67 that is in this example, and the Caltech 101. And as I said, EPIC is a secure, efficient and accurate solution, so let me tell you a little bit about efficiency as well. Um, so the performance was really good compared to the related work, and this is the um, accuracy of the different data sets and the online and offline uh, cost, communication and computation cost. And as you can see, at least compared to the um, offline phase, the online cost is really negligible. You can barely see it in the graphs. Um, and the same holds for the communication cost. Um, and what else is uh, important to mention is that, of course, as the number of classes grow, so in the Cypher 10 we have 10 different labels, in the MIT 67 we have 67 different themes and one, one has actually 102 
classes and they, uh, the more uh, the classes grow, the less efficient the solution becomes, obviously. Um, and these experiments are performed with uh, two MPC servers because that, that yields the fastest solution, but we also show in the paper how the efficiency uh, scales with more number of parties. Now, compared to the related work, uh, I had to log plot the uh, graph so that you can see the differences because Epic was really, really doing uh, a good job compared to the uh, previous state of the art. So we compared with Minion and Gazelle, which are um, two, so the two most recent solutions on private image specification. And as you can see, both the computation and the communication cost of Epic is yeah, a lot better. We are talking about uh, for computation cost, for example, in the range of um, milliseconds or a few, up to a few seconds compared to a few hundreds of seconds. So, uh, I didn't mention yet, but we have two uh, versions of EPIC. The simple variant which takes all the features from the one but last uh, layer of Inception V3. <coughs> These are 2048 features. And we have a complex variant which performs a um, reduction, dimension reduction on these features and this is of course faster but it comes at the cost of uh, lower accuracy. So we also made, did some experiments by, with matching the accuracy of the two other solutions on Cypher 10. So this is the best accuracy that EPIC can achieve on Cypher 10 and that's 7% uh, higher than the accuracy of the other two, and yet it's way faster. But we also try to measure what happens if we match their accuracy, so approximately 82%, and uh, then what would be the uh, efficiency gap. So on the simple version, uh, EPIC is 34 times faster in terms of runtime, and 50 times faster, uh, 50 times better in terms of communication cost and at the same time we achieve 7% higher accuracy and when we tune for performance and lower the accuracy to match the one of Gazelle then the solution is 700 times faster and the communication cost is 500 times better. So we have a secure, efficient and reasonably accurate solution and what now? Um, I think with active security and dishonest majority uh, we are good on the two of the three aspects but um, we still need to focus on increasing accuracy if we want to compete with plain text models. So these uh, accuracy metrics I showed are comparisons between other private classifiers but if you have a non-private classifier of course the accuracy increases and in certain scenarios at uh, 12 percent or a 10% chance of having a wrong label can be yeah, not acceptable. So the question is how can we make now private solution more accurate while maintaining the, the security level and this accuracy uh, level. And that was epic. Uh, I would be happy to get your questions.